Uh, this is my first time in Romania, so uh, a first of many. Um, thank you so much. I uh, hope you'll be gentle. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm honored to be here, all the way from Kenya. Um, so I'll just, I'll just start. Um, so initially, my talk is for anyone who's new to coding, who wants to code, or any junior React developers who found themselves in the place that I was. Um, so who am I? Uh, this is my lovely family. I'm a mother of three. Um, I live in Nairobi. Uh, my name is Nigeria, but I'm, I'm Kenyan. <laughs> I was, I was born when my father was traveling in Nigeria, um, and unfortunately, I never got to ask him why he named me that. But um, the first time I went to Nigeria and I showed them my passport at immigration, um, the guy looked at the passport, he looked at me, and then he asked me, what's your name? And I'm like, Nigeria. And I was going to a conference, a social media conference, and every time I introduced myself, everyone just hugged me. They were like, oh my God, you're coming back home. <laughs> so that was, that was exciting. Um, so what do I do for work? I am a technical manager with a nonprofit called Girl Effect. So we empower girls using digital media and technology. I am a manual QA tester for a platform called Wild Pulse. I used to be a member of the platform for a very long time. And when they were looking for a QA tester, I was the perfect candidate because I'm, I'm a community member. And then I also do Facebook moderation for my bootcamp's Facebook page. It's called Women Plus in Web Development. And the bootcamp is Cordop from Barcelona, Cordop Tech in Barcelona. And I actually flew here from Barcelona. I had to pass by there. Um, so my backstory is three things that you need to know about me. I quit my job at age 45 and transitioned into tech. I'm a mother, I'm a problem solver and creator by default, and I'm all about providing scalable and efficient solutions. And that's whether it's at home or at work. Um, so, let me reframe. When, I, when I, I was sitting next to Xavier yesterday, and I was speaking to Andreas here, and I, I felt I needed to reframe my talk because I'm all about being agile and ready to change based on the audience and the context. So today, my talk's title is actually Finding Ruby and Falling in Love with Rails. So. <clears throat> okay. So this is how it started. Um, I met a friend who was looking for someone to help him write a brief for a developer to do some work for his nonprofit. And he explained to me the problem, and I was like, ah, that's easy, I can do that for you. So I wrote out the brief, and he went out to like, LinkedIn, reached out to developers, like, I have this problem, this is my organization, and I'll tell you the problem in a bit. Can you do this, can you build this for me? And everyone he talked to was like, yeah, maybe, I don't know, I don't understand. And so he came back to me and told me, because by explaining what my problem was, you wrote out this clear brief, why can't you build a project for me? So <laughs> I said yes. At this time, I'd only done boot camp. I'd worked for one year as a junior uh, developer, both full stack and front end, and I'd moved into project management. Um, so I said yes. I was like, ah, this is easy. I'll build it in React. So, who's the client? The client is a local nonprofit, reaches 2,000 2, boys and girls in six clinics, uh, their rugby clinics, in two counties in Nairobi. And they use rugby to develop children and, um, and youth, both on and off the pitch. So they go into a community, use rugby as an entry point, they sign up kids for rugby sessions, and when they sign up the children for rugby sessions, a child has to come for four consecutive weeks before they're taken into the beneficiary program. So that's step one. So a child gets into the beneficiary program, then 
a social worker is sent to the family to record all the data about the family, where they live, their social economic status, how many kids are in that family, how, how big the environment, like big or small the house is, um, the income levels of the family, and this determines how far the NGO can support the children. I said yes. I found out that they had a problem. They were using Microsoft Access to record player attendance, and then they moved to Google Sheets because all the field officers would be able to access through the Google accounts. And as you know, this poses a lot of challenges in terms of security. And then all the things that they had recorded on the Google Sheets were not searchable and referenceable. They were not able to create, update, access, and retrieve beneficiary records quickly verify the number of beneficiaries for any of the activities, be they rugby, be they life skill sessions, and also um, verify location of the households. So everything was so manual. And this, they were using um, tablets just to fill into the Google Sheets. And these Google Sheets then would be sent to the m &E officer in the headquarters. So in terms of the efficiency of having that data, like up to date and um, easily accessible was a challenge. I said yes, took on the, the job. I did a proposal and my idea was simple. You have a form which you can uh, load all the data you have onto the phone or the tablet. Um, you can check the data that you've already loaded for each um, player and the beneficiaries and the family and the location, again, through the tablet. Simple, right? So I told them I'm going to improve the recording um, and access of the inventory of the beneficiary records. I'm going to enable them to access the platform by field teams with low internet connectivity to update beneficiary records. Um, and it was going to be easy to generate inventory and beneficiary activity attendance reports. I mean, I'd done it before, right? My, my boot camp project, I did it, so let's go. Um, went through the planning process, uh, spoke to members of the team, understood their roles and responsibilities, the challenges they were facing, biggest challenge, a lot of paperwork, inconsistent records, and inability to, to search. Um, next thing I did, I reviewed all the forms and the inputs by the teams that, that they did um, as they like collect the records and in their day-to-day -day activities. I created a flow diagram, a user journey, created a document to what features I had proposed for the MVP. We agreed it was going to be an MVP, quick and easy. Um, got ahead to start building. I started off with the high-res prototype uh, using a UI uh, and bootstrap. Um, and at that step, I then went back to, it was literally trans, transferring what was on the form uh, onto Bootstrap and then and interacted with the coaches and the social workers and the M&E officers to understand what made, what was, if it was going to make sense to them. One thing I quickly realized that there were a lot of inefficiencies and some forms were being filled by people who didn't have the right information. So for example, the coaches had this long form that were, they were filling a lot more family information but the coaches only met the students in the field, so they had no contact with the parents. So we changed the, the, the initial forms to fit all the different steps and the users, uh, that the users were, were, were going through. Um, and I think of all the users, the coaches had now the shortest form, the social worker had the longest, because then they interacted a lot more with the family and the parents. Um, and then, of course, uh, the M&E officer was, was ready to receive everything um, there. So we tweaked the flow, proposed tech stack, React, Bootstrap, Chat.js for the data, to show the data of how many players are in whatever region, Node.js for the backend, and MongoDB. And that's where my problem started. <laughs> so. <clears throat> My initial attraction to React was because that is all I knew. Um, and I was willing to learn MongoDB just to make it work. Um, <laughs> this felt like a really bad relationship. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I had built a great project at the boot camp and it worked. And I, I felt this, we could do this again. I just needed to be patient. The agreement, the project was supposed to take six months. Six months in, I did not have a fully working MVP. So, uh, I was like, no, this is not, it's not flexible. I was having too many challenges. And remember, I'm a mother, I have three jobs that I do. So I was doing this like late in the evenings and late into the night. And it got more complicated, I got more frustrated. And you all know the feeling when the code is not working, you're like, you know what, I don't want to see this project for today, maybe tomorrow, and I would always find an excuse not to finish it. Um, I called the office and I asked for more time. So, six months in, I was struggling with the simplest of things, something as simple as I could add an image to the database from the form, but I couldn't get the form visually to show on the front end. And I was like, this is bullshit. So I started Googling, I'm like, I need something, I need something I could use to build this very fast. And I asked myself, why didn't I find Ruby on Rails way before this story started? So, Ruby on Rails to the rescue. You had me at Rails Generate Scaffold. That was it, that was the line, and I was like, Fuck React. I'm sorry for those people who love React, <laughs> and for those who will watch this, fuck React. Um, so this was it. And then, literally, if you're ever thinking of <laughs> one, two, three, and you have a crude up, I'm sorry. Why, am I, why are we learning React again? <laughs> anyway, so for those of you out there learning React, um, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Take it from me, that's, like, that's your first relationship, but better love will come with Rails. <laughs> um, yeah, so with, <laughs> you all know, this is where you start and then your life goes to shit after that. <laughs> Where you have to have, you set up routing, you create components, fetch data from an API, handle user input, update state, set up the backend, create API routes, middleware and validation, error handling, starting a server, cause handling, set up your database, and life is just passing by as you're still <laughs> doing all this. So, if I could go back to the start, I have seven reasons why I would go, do, do Rails all over again. In comparison of the time I took to build the Rails app, it was six months plus. And when I discovered, sorry, uh, React, it was six months and plus. When I discovered Rails and built the app, it took me three fucking weeks. <laughs> so, I mean, this is like preaching to the choir, but I'm just gonna let this like stay here for a bit for those of you who <laughs> are still trying a relationship with React. Um, I mean, the speed, no switching between technologies, a wonderful community, this is proof. Um, Built-in features, and today, Brick. L Lorian? Yeah. The, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. So, and that's, that's my talk. <laughs> Thank you so much to these cool guys. Um, it's, it's been a journey for me to get here. I had to come through Spain because that was the easiest visa for me to get and the quickest. Um, and, and I really appreciate your support. And there were days um, Adrian and Jacob they would email me like, have you gotten your visa? 
what's going on? Have you gotten your ticket? Like it was, it was just another, that's another story I tell you. And then I also want to thank this guy who I met on some Ruby on Rails hackathon. And he's, um, he has a service called Sudoku. It's for anyone who wants to deploy and host web apps, it's in beta testing, right? It's in beta phase and anyone can access it. He's called Tezos. Um, on, on uh, what's it called? LinkedIn, uh, Tasho's web development, and that's the, the link is sodoku.com. Like, that was the quickest uh, deployment and hosting I ever did. Um, and yeah, the app is actually online. Um, and then this, this friend of mine from Barcelona, she's called Nurjana Omer, she's a UX designer. Um, I, I missed my flight. <laughs> I missed my flight on, when was it? Monday morning. I missed my flight on Monday morning. And I could not buy a ticket if I didn't have a card. So in the morning, I'd, I was sure I was gonna like, fly in. So I withdrew all my money from my card. And then I got, I missed the Wiz flight, and I got to the online, and they said I can only buy online. There was no, what's that flight? High Sky. High Sky don't have an office, so I had to buy it online. And I had the cash on me, but I couldn't, I didn't have any cash on my card. And I called her and she paid for my ticket. Um, yeah, so if you're not for I would not be standing here. And lastly, my family who love and support and bear with me when I'm, yeah, doing all the things that I'm doing. And for my kids for keeping me on toes. She's uh, studying statistics. My son built a game when he was nine. He, and my youngest has a thousand followers on TikTok. <laughs> my, yes, um, and my husband, who's always been there through thick and thin with me, he's a dancer, choreographer, and yeah, he hates computers, so. <laughs> That's how we get along. Um, so, thank you very much. That's, I'm Nigeria Toyota on LinkedIn. Nigeria at Mama Tech. I'm Nash the coder on GitHub, and that's my WhatsApp. And thank you very much.